So in chapter 11, we will study uh, a special kind of graphs called trees. What are trees? They are connected and directed graphs with no simple circuit. So it is connected graph and directed with no simple circuits. That means we cannot uh, uh, have a closed path. We cannot start at some vertex and then go along some edges and come back to that vertex. We cannot do that for any vertex. If that happens, then we call this graph tree. And the reason we call it a tree, because we can graph it or re-graph it so that it looks like a tree. Okay. So this is the definition I have just uh, uh, stated a tree is a connected it must be connected graph and directed with no simple circuits no simple circuit okay so because tree cannot have simple circuit and cannot it cannot then it cannot contain multiple edges or loops it cannot contain multiple edges or loops because multiple edges or loops will make circuits for us okay so multiple edges that means there are two edges for example between two vertices then you can follow start at some vertex follow some edge to the other vertex and then come back to the first vertex using the second edge that is a circuit if there's a loop then it is a circuit at that some vertex so we cannot have multiple edges or loops in a graph which is called a tree so a tree is a connected graph and directed contains no loop contains no uh, edges and therefore we must have the graph to be simple so that the tree to be a simple graph and these are examples for uh, trees for g1 this is a tree uh, look at this g1 in here try to go from some vertex and then come back to that vertex then you cannot so you cannot make a simple circuit in that uh, graph now why we call it a tree does this graph here look like a tree we can make it look like a tree actually for instance we can choose uh, we can graph it this way this is c we can say this is c from c so i'm using now this now I will draw this going to A, so I will say this is A, and this is B, and this is D, and also this is, so I will draw this now, this is F, and from F there is an edge going down to E. This looks like kind of tree, huh? Okay, G2 also is is it a tree can we make a circle a circuit sorry a circuit inside g2 can i start at some vertex and then come back to it we cannot so i will write this is tree and this is tree and if we want to play with the tree g2 so let me uh, try to play with g2 and uh, see if i can re-graph it so that it look like a tree so maybe if I choose here to start at the vertex E, this is the vertex E. Then there are two edges, I may say two branches. One of them is going to F and the other is going to B. So one of them is going to B and the other is going to F, a vertex F. And then from the vertex F, we have an edge going to D and another edge going to A. So I will do this is going to A and this is going to D. And from D we have an edge going to a vertex C. And this goes to a vertex uh, C. That looks like a tree, huh? Okay. Now what's about G3? Is G3 a tree? Can we make a simple circuit? Can we start at some vertex and come back to it? And the answer is yes. For instance, we can go from this vertex here, go to B, go to A, and then come back to D, uh, go to D, sorry, then come back to E. 
so this is a circuit this is a circuit so this is not this is not a tree because there is a circuit okay and now what's about g4 there is no circuit in g4 we cannot make a circuit but g4 is disconnected disconnected you may look at uh, you may think this is in here this intersection is a connection no this is not a connection this is an edge put being put it over another edge so this graph in here we can uh, graph it this way it has two pieces let me say uh, c e so i will draw this piece in green and then uh, we can go uh, b d this is one piece the other piece of this graph is f and a so this graph is disconnected so it is not a tree we will call it a forest it consists of two trees uh, actually uh, this is a tree by itself this part is a tree we can consider it as a tree by itself this part is connected no, and no circuits and this part is another tree so we can um, uh, if, if you wish I can draw it this way this is E and this is C so that it looks like a tree for us so a uh, graph G4 is not a tree but it consists of two trees so we will call it a forest so this is the definition of a forest so again G4 is not uh, a tree because it is not connected so we need two things connected for a graph connected and has no simple circuit so uh, any connected graph that contains no simple circuit is the tree we are saying okay any connected graph that uh, contains no simple circuit is a tree and the tree is a connected graph which, con which connect uh, which contains no simple circuit so the definition goes to the two directions now what if we have a graph that consists of two or three trees which which means it is not connected not connected and you know when we are given a graph which is not connected we can take the connected subgraphs of it the connected pieces once each one of these connected pieces is a tree then we will say the whole graph is a forest okay so a forest are connected graphs that have the property that each one of them is a tree so it is uh, not a connected graph not connected so it has connected pieces but they are separated each one of these connected pieces is a tree okay so, uh, so that's that's what we mean by a forest you can make uh, whatever graphs you want and say this is a forest we can do this is a uh, this is a tree for example and we can go okay this is uh, another graph and we can say okay so the whole the whole this graph I take it as one graph and I will call this uh, a forest okay the whole the all pieces the three pieces together is called one graph and it is called forest it consists of trees okay so a theorem let's go back to trees a theorem says an undirected graph is a tree if and only if there is a unique simple path between any two of, of its vertices now we are saying here simple path between any two vertices this is not this is not a circuit it is a path uh, you know given a graph with vertices you may go from one vertex to other following some path of edges but you also may go from the verse vertex to the other following some other path over edges right there might be two paths taking from uh, one vertex to the other in a tree this cannot happen okay and if you have a graph where this cannot happen then the graph you have is a tree so this is what we mean by if and only if so this direction says if the graph we have in hand is a tree then we cannot have more than one path 
which means there is only one unique path between any two vertices so this is this direction and if you have a graph where there is only one path between any two vertices then the graph in hand is a tree so this is the other direction okay now rooted trees which means trees that has roots and uh, intuitively I believe you can guess what does that mean uh, so a rooted tree A rooted tree here okay a rooted tree with a root is a tree in which one vertex has been designated as the root and every edge is directed away from that root what what does it mean it means there is a vertex uh, at which if I start at and then give direction for the edges then from that vertex I can go to every edge so simply uh, this is the root of this tree because you can see because I can go to any any vertex using this direction starting from a okay and this is the root here at C for the same reason okay and uh, what's about the graph t here okay we will see some terminology of uh, trees now we will care about the root of the tree we will see it uh, in a while okay now uh, for this graph here and the root will be C, right? So if we give if we give it this direction, then that will work the same thing. So it doesn't matter if you draw uh, the the tree from above to below, or or if, if we flip it. Okay. Now we will need to use uh, some terminology of trees. Uh, you know, if we make a family tree, family of people like uh, the father the son the grandfather the ancestors the descendant a big tree of some family so it will have some terminology and we will use these terminologies here okay so what do i mean okay the terminology of trees suppose that t is a rooted tree then uh, if v is not the root okay so choose any vertex which is not the root we will find the parent for that vertex okay so you know at, at family trees the top the very uh, big grandfather we stop somewhere then there is no parent for that guy in that tree he has a, he has a parent for sure but in the tree if there is no parent above it then we will say it is the root of the tree now if it is if we choose a vertex which is not that uh, that root then it must have a parent then we will say a parent of a vertex v is the unique vertex u such that there is a direct directed edge from v to u, from v to u. like uh, okay we will we will see this example so quick in this uh, and v will be called a child for you in the graph below we will see uh, a graph and we will see all these term terminologies now vertices with the same parent are called siblings brothers maybe vertices with the same parent and sister of some vertex are the vertices in the path from that vertex to the root the ancestor so if some person is in the tree then the ancestors are all uh, the parents between him and the root the descendant are the children's the children and the children of the children and so on the descendant of the vertex v are those vertices that have v as an ancestor okay now uh, the vertex will be called the leaf and these two uh, remaining uh, terminologies will be used uh, a lot a vertex is called a leaf if it has no children so it is at the bottom of the tree 
it has no children so we will call it a leaf it is the very last thing that the tree ends with right when trees goes up it has a big branch and then branches smaller branches all the way till it ends with a leaf okay and there are no branches going out of the leaf okay again vertices that have uh, children are called internal vertices so we have two kind of vertices leaves and internal vertices Ver the leaves are at the end so they have no children no just going out of them okay these are the leaves the other vertices that are not leaves are called internal vertices internal vertices are vertices that have children okay so we will make uh, this uh, clear uh, okay so let's see let's uh, C is a parent of P uh, sorry uh, the parent of C is P so this is a C here and you can see the parent of C is P and we can say the parent of I is G the parent of M uh, is J and so on okay the children of G the children's of G so this is G we want to see the children so, and we will have that only we are not saying the descendants we are saying children H I G H I G those are the children of G okay the children of G what if I ask you about so let me go for that the children of G in green what if I ask you about the descendant of G all descendants of G so let me write that descendants of G all the vertices that have G as an ancestor which means H I G M L K those are all the descendants of G okay so let's keep going the siblings of H where is H so let me erase let me erase uh, many things in here so the siblings of H so let me clean the graph okay now we are looking for the siblings of H that are I and J so let's go back uh, and see what the definition of the siblings it says the vertices with the same parent okay vertices with the same parent that I said about brothers so the siblings of H so this is H it has a parent G right so what other vertices share the same parent with H they are I and G so the siblings of H I and J the siblings of I H and J and the siblings of G H and I okay okay what else the ancestors of E where is E here is E who are the ancestors of E C B A the ancestors of the vertex are all vertices in the path from E to the root so the ancestors of E are C P and A the descendants of P whereas B this is B the descendants are C D and E C D and E okay good now the thing that are left the internal vertices and the leaves and I want to emphasize on this this one uh, more than the others so let me uh, 
clean the graph again. So I will go for red and indicate the internal vertices. The definition of internal vertices here says all vertices that have children. Okay. So they are this one, this one. I does not have a children, so it is a leaf. The vertices that do not have a children, no branches going out of them, are called leaves. G has a children, J has a children, B has a children, and A has a children. Those are internal vertices. Okay. What about the leaves? A leaf is a vertex that has no children. So D is a leaf. E, K, L, M, I, and F. So remember that internal vertices are the ones that are not leaves. They have children, internal vertices. Leaves, they have no children, okay? We will need that for the remaining of this lecture. Okay. We can define what do we mean by a uh, subtree rooted at some vertex. What I mean here, if we choose a vertex A, if a vertex, if A is a vertex in a tree, the subtree with A as its root is the subgraph of the tree consisting of A and its descendants and all edges incident to, to these vertices descendants. For example, this is here the rooted graph the rooted the rooted is the, the sub t rooted at g from the above graph so g is here and we will take all descendants and the vertices that are incident to these descendants so here we go so this is the sub tree rooted at g so we started at some vertex and then cut that vertex and all descendants with it out. Then this will be called subtree rooted at the vertex that we made the cut at. Definition. A rooted tree is called M array tree. M array tree, notice this, M is some integer. So M array tree, what does it mean? The graphs here gives an idea. If every internal vertex, internal vertex means a vertex that has children, edges going out of them. So if every internal vertex has at most M children, at most M children. Okay. Okay. Now, a tree is called. Uh, so before I keep going, let me give an example for the definition the fir in the first line. So uh, if I draw such a tree. So the root has, the root is an internal vertex because it has children. Here it has the three vertices. Now I go to this vertex and make three children for it. I go to this vertex, make two children for it. And to this vertex, make one children for it. So this, every vertex has no more than in here, every 
vertex has no more than three children. Has no more than three children. So we will call this three array three. Okay, the most number of children that a vertex has is three. So we call it three array three. Now, what's about the uh, meaning of the definition? A tree is called a full, full M array tree if every internal vertex has exactly M children. Okay? So, for instance, this is a full, okay, it is full binary tree. In here, it means uh, full uh, two array because I did not complete the, the reading of the definition uh, tree and we we'll go here and m array tree with m equals 2 if m equals 2 then we call it binary tree so this is a full binary tree or a full two array tree uh, in here it is a full three array tree because because every vertex every internal vertex has three children okay so this vertex here has a three children one two three okay and this vertex here has a three children one two three and the other one one two three and this vertex here has two children three children now you may say oh okay wait a minute there is a vertex that does not have three children so how come we call it full three array trees actually this does not go against the definition because it says every internal vertex every internal vertex has exactly m children this is not an internal vertex this is a leaf right this is a leaf while uh, the definition requires internal vertex uh, so you started to notice with me that every vertex in a tree is either an internal vertex or it is a leaf okay good so let's go down and see uh, more examples of array trees uh, this is a full five array tree so each internal vertex has five vertices this is an internal vertex and it has one two three four five vertices this is another internal vertex and it has one two three four five vertices and uh, this is another internal vertex and it has one two three four five vertices uh, these two vertices in here are leaves okay so the ones I am now uh, pointing out with a green they are leaves so we don't look uh, we don't care uh, for them for not having children it's just we will count the children of internal vertices now t4 here is not a full array for any uh, for any M why because this vertex here has uh, in here it has two children but each one of these has three children this one has two children so some of the internal vertices have two children and some of them have three children so it is not a full it is not a full uh, m array for any m but it is so the most number of children here is three right so we will say this is a three array three because every vertex has at most three children okay so this is the idea of array matrices and let's see some uh, facts about it 
an ordered rooted tree is a rooted tree where the children of each internal vertex are ordered so the children is a children of an internal vertex now what does it mean for order here we care when we have an internal vertex and uh, two sons two children out of it we care which one we put at the left and which one we put at the right so this is the order we mean uh, for example in a binary tree binary means every internal vertex has two children exactly in a binary tree the first child child is called the right the left sorry the left child and the second child is called the right child you know usually when uh, uh, trees of families of people real people families are drawn then they when, when they reach some parent and then they want to list uh, his children usually they start at the left and they write the name of the oldest of the children right so in here for a special case when they have two children then the one comes at the left uh, is the first children it is called and the second children is the one that comes at the right and if we go to uh, the left child and take the tree whose left child is a root for it then it will be called a left subtree and we do the same will be called the right subtree and we still talking about binary trees so let us see uh, that in the following example this is a binary tree isn't it it is a binary tree uh, i will be wrong if i say every vertex has two children and the mistake in there uh, because i need to specify the vertices that have children are the internal vertices so i will say every internal vertex have two children and some vertices are not internal vertex for example uh, and the graph at the left e is a leaf and it is not an internal vertex so okay let's see the left subtree of c so where is c this is c so this is the left uh, child of c and we will take all descendants of c and then uh, sorry uh, all descendants but we are not taking c uh, with them so we will take this part I, I was planning to take C with it so this is this part is in here while the left the sorry the right subtree of C so we are not taking C so we go here and start with that child of C and then we take all this to be the right subtree of C okay now we go to some theorems for parties of trees a tree with n vertices has n minus one edges huh? without a proof this shall be so direct you agree because in a tree every vertex will be uh, produced by some edge right so if we have n minus one vertices take off the root because the root is not coming from any edge and now go to any other vertex rather than the root then to reach that vertex we must follow a certain edge okay and there is only one edge for every vertex so if we have n vertices in the whole tree take the root out of there and then for every vertex count the edges for every vertex there's an edge but we have taken the root which is one vertex so we are left with one minus one vertices so we have n one minus edges so maybe to make this clear if we have a uh, a tree of this form okay so count the edges we will not count them here but we will say for this vertex we have this edge 
for this vertex we have that edge for this vertex with that we have the edge that brings to it for this vertex there's an edge for it for this vertex there's an edge so every vertex is is reached following a certain edge right and this vertex has this edge this vertex has this edge but the root no just no edge that brings the root so we have n vertices take the root away then we are left with n minus one vertices and each vertex correspond to some edge so we have n minus one edges in a tree with n vertices good now what if we go to m array tree m array tree with i internal vertices how many vertices it contains now look at it here i am talking about i internal vertices so I'm assuming I have a vertex, sorry, a tree that has I internal vertices. Internal, it means it has children. Okay. Now I'm assuming here that every internal vertex has M children. Agree? Every internal vertex has M children. So how many vertices I will have? I want to count the internal vertices plus the leaves. Okay? And the result comes out to be this. Why this is true? I'm saying for every internal vertex there are M children. So for all internal vertices we have m times i children's okay now i'm counting the children's here for all internal vertices again i'm counting the children's so how many internal vertices we have i so we have i uh, internal vertices so let me write that here i internal vertices okay and we have M children so we have M children for each of them them that means the antenna vertices so we will have M times I children's so in here m times i is the number of children the a number of all children in the tree good so where where this one has came from it is the root because it is not a children of any vertex so we counted the number of all children and then added the root to it so again the theorem says if we have a full m array matrix a tree with i internal vertices then the whole number of vertices in the tree is m times i plus one okay now here we come to a more detailed theorem that has the following oops I need to take away this um, okay I needed to I needed some space to write the proof is okay let's see um, okay if we have um, a, a full M array tree again each internal vertex has exactly M children okay now it says a full M tree with N vertices so we are assuming that we have a full M tree with N vertices and then we are concluding the following it has I internal vertices so we are concluding this and it has L leaves 
So we want to prove that. Now this theorem, the part, part one of this theorem says if we have a full M ray tree with N vertices, the whole vertices, the root, the internal vertices, the leaves, all of them. Then it says, I can't tell you what is the number of the internal vertices and the number of the leaves. You know now, the set of vertices, the set of vertices in the tree uh, is split into two parts. The internal vertices and the leaves. So if you tell me that you have N vertices, all of them are N vertices, then I can tell you the number of the internal vertices, the ones that have children, and the number of the leaves, the one that do not have children. And I have two informations, N vertices, and I have a tree which is M full array. Okay? So, what I have just said here is the following. So let me uh, use another. Uh, I want a, sp a space for the proof, so I will uh, copy and paste uh, things. So again, if we have an a full M array tree with N vertices, then I want to prove that the number of internal vertices is that many, and the number of leaves are that many. Now, let me emphasize here before I start the proof that uh, the set of vertices, set of vertices, of any tree of any tree here equals so let me write them this way the set of internal vertices so those are the ones that have children's union the set of leaves agree with that and there is no vertex which is an internal vertex and the leaf at the same time which means those, those two sets are disjoint so the number of all vertices so let me say uh, with this notation the number of all vertices equals to the number of internal vertices plus the number of leaves so if I denote the number of all uh, vertices to be n then that n will equal the number of internal vertices which is i plus the number of leaves which is l so you know when you have two sets that are disjoint then the order of the their union is the summation of the orders for each of them so again the proof depends on this quality now again let me write here we mean by n number so let me write it this way number of all vertices and we mean by i to be the number of internal vertices And we mean by L to be the number of leaves. And we will have that, as we said, the number of all vertices will equal the number of the internal vertices plus the number of the leaves. This equality here is what we need to prove the whole theorem the three parts of the theorem so to prove part one so this is uh, shall be direct uh, okay uh, to prove uh, part one we will use the above theorem remember what the above theorem says 
we let me write it here uh, the number of all vertices equals m times i the number of alternate vertices plus one okay we are in a full m array matrix we will use that okay so simply using this we get i equals n minus one over m and then we are done with the first part and okay from this we get l equals n minus i but we have i given here and that means n minus n minus 1 over m just compute it we get n times m minus n plus 1 over m and this what we want it from there it take m as a common factor out of this so we get m minus 1 times n plus 1 over m and then we get the what we wanted so we proved this part and we proved that part here okay now to prove part i and part j actually you can play with them they are just playing with that so uh, to prove part i for example this part it, okay let's let's read it it says if we have a full embrace vertices with i internal vertices with i internal vertices then we will have that number of vertices but this is already proved in the theorem above and we will have that number of leaves and this shall be shall be so direct using uh, these two boxes here this one and this one okay so i will let you check it out what's about bar to three How we prove part three same thing it will have some uh, playing with these equalities let me read it if we have a full um, array tree with l leaves then we have this number of vertices all the vertices at this number of internal vertices the internal vertices and how we prove it we will just play with uh, the the inequalities above there and maybe we will use part two for it so okay to prove part three we assume that we have uh, a full m array tree with l leaves okay now if we use if we use this result from part two of the theorem then we get i equals this okay and then now replace i this i in this equation here which is in part two again and then compute for m then we will prove this part here which says uh, m equals n equals this expression okay so I will let you uh, play with it till you prove part 3 okay example suppose some one starts a chain letter what that means uh, somebody will, will write a letter and send it to people and then each person who received the letter is asked to send send it out to four people so you write a letter to everyone and then uh, ask everyone who receive it to write four copies of that letter and send it to four other people some people would do this but others do not send any letter okay so how many people have seen the letter so this is the question including the first person who started it if no one receive more than one letter no one receives more than one letter okay so that assume 
you will not receive this letter again from some other person and if the chain letter ends after there have been 100 people who read it but did not send it out so how many people sent the letter so this process will keep going people will receive letter and make uh, four copies out of it and then send it to four people and so on but it will stop at some point okay so when this is stopped we counted the number of people who received the letter and did not uh, write copies and they, they say there are 100 people who read it but did not send it out so if we graph this process in a tree we start with the first person see this is the first person in here and uh, this guy has made four copies of the letter one two three four and send it now we will assume this guy have done the same thing so one two three four and maybe this guy again done the same thing but the other guys did not and now keep going this guy have done it for four people and maybe the remaining guys did not maybe this guy have done it for four people and maybe only one guy of these and when uh, then we keep going now the question says if the number of people who received the letter uh, did, uh, if the number of people who, did, who received the letter but did not copy it did not, did not send it again is 100 so it asks how many people sent out the letter so it tells us this 100 it represents the leaves those are the ones who received the letter but did not copy it okay so we know the number of the leaves so l equals 100 according to our notation above the number of the leaves now it asks how many people sent out the letter now the vertices in blue are the people who sent out the letter and in the language of tree that means they are the internal vertices and the number of the internal vertices is denoted by i okay so how many people sent out the letter that means find i so we are requested to find i so how do we know uh, what is i okay how do we know what is i and how we get it out so shall i leave uh, some time for moments you think about for moments so actually we have uh, we are in a full four ray tree do you agree four ray three because the internal vertices has four children each person who received the letter and send it out to people has sent it out exactly to four people right so every internal vertex has four uh, children so this is the number of m so now we have uh, in hand l equal 100 m equals 4 and we want to find i so simply we know that uh, we will use uh, or we know that uh, n equals l plus i right no mm, we don't we don't know what is l is so which uh, which uh, which equality I shall use so I have M I have L I want to know uh, I Ho how do I know uh, I so what in quality 
we shall we uh, use so I have M and L and I so I can go we want to know the number of internal vertices so here we go right this is the number of internal vertices can I use the theorem in here it is a 4 okay so I equals L minus 1 over M minus 1 and that means the number I equals 100 minus 1 over this is 1 sorry 100 minus 1 over 4 minus 1 so this gives us 33 people have sent uh, out the letter okay and this uh, brings us to the end of uh, our lecture